Committee. Thank you very much. Uh, for me, it's great honor to take part in this Congress. I will be very happy to share our vision of the problem of uh, coordinating a multidisciplinary team. So first and foremost, we would like to, I would like to roughly explain the decision-making process and what actually is happening in the head of a pathologist. This is an utterly important aspect for my colleagues just to imagine, to have a vision of what is happening inside the analytical and the pre-analytical as well as the post-analytical stages of diagnostics. So, first of all, we get a sample. We somehow process it. This is the pre-analytical stage. Then there is a gross tissue preposition or gross dissection. That actually means that we provide the macroscopic morphological description and the preparation of the histological sli uh, slice or section. So here we speak about two very important aspects. First, it's the analysis, and the second is the synthesis of the findings. Out of all this, we can provide diagnosis on the basis of which our most respected clinicians start working. In my work, we first of all, based upon the WHO classification, which you can see here, this is the book published in 2013, but this year, uh, in 2020, we already have the updated version of classification, which we actually are striving to um, start using, and we are going to uh, just move on to it in the nearest future. There are several types of bone specimens and biopsies, as well as the soft tissues. This is the core needle biopsy, the, uh, or the fi uh, fine needle aspiration or aspirate for the cytology, also incisional or intralesional resection or bone curatage, and quite naturally, a big specimen of large resection or amputation. In this particular case, it is utterly important, it's drastically important to provide to the clinician all the relevant information, not only about the type of histological and histological subtype of the tumor, but also about the uh, state of the resection margin, exactly where the uh, surgeon's knife uh, was cutting. The bone curatage or the small incisional biopsies with the, from the macroscopic viewpoint, they are not of any uh, difficulty. Wide resections. This is huge work both for us and for our fellows and residents who uh, do the uh, who provide us with these uh, specimens. In our work, quite naturally, we use IHC staining as well as fish in situ hybridization if needed. Macroscopical examination of the specimen, especially the wide or the bigger ones, as you can see here, this is a big sarcoma, large one with an articulation. And you can see here that it requires um, skill and a great deal of knowledge, exactly what we require from our uh, just fellow students. Now, this is a margin evaluation. And first of all, we need to determine the distance of the tumor from the margin it should be reported, and uh, these margins should be taken as perpendicular margins uh, to the main bulk of tumor. 
In this particular situation, you can see a schematic view of different margins that you can come across. And you can see wide uh, margins uh, which are over two centimeters from the um, from the core of the tumor. Just give me a second. The margins must be taken perpendicularly, and they must be stained black. The way you see now, sampling of margins, they are done perpendicular, and you can see that they are stained, um, they are stained black. In my laboratory, we use protocols of the College of American Pathologists, or the so-called CAP protocols, which provide us with an opportunity to standardize our activities. Uh, it's utterly important to standard, standardize all our histological reports and all the other reports uh, per se, because the standardization, in fact, is uh, can result in can result in a common mutual language with our clinicians, which is utterly important for further communication. A histological procedure, this fixation in formalin, as well as the um, staining and the delineation of margins, all these procedures are utterly important. Larger uh, samples are either cut with a knife, if it is a soft tissue specimen, or it can be also cut with a saw if it is a bone specimen and the decalcifying process. These are utterly important. All these small, petty details, they give us an opportunity to provide quality specimen, quality uh, and a very uh, sort of quality diagnosis, high quality diagnosis. So uh, this is the embedding station where we uh, have this paraffin uh, fixation. And this is exactly how our station for staining looks like. As a result, you receive 20, 30, 40 specimens or slides, the histological importance of which Thus, the process of processing larger spe or wide specimen, uh, specimens, they require significant technical skills. That's exactly what we require from our fellow students and residents. And also margin evaluation and det detection. The optimal um, resection margins are two centimeters uh, from the uh, macroscopically uh, macroscopical view of the tumor or two centimeters from normal tissue along the fascia if the tumor is restricted with fascia. And uh, the margins are also uh, sampled perpendicularly in order for us to measure the distance um, um, under the microscope. In my work, we actually use standard CAP protocols, I mean College of American Pathologists protocols, which provide us an opportunity to uh, find common mutual language with our clinicians. So this is how the grossing grow looks like, and uh, this is our uh, machine for printing cassettes, our fellows and the uh, residents work uh, on it. As I've already told, the uh, margin delineation is utterly important. And within the process of preparing the sample, uh, it, it, is, it still happens within the pre-analytical stage. The eye of a pathologist, of a specialist, has not started working with the specimen yet. 
in this situation, if it is a wide specimen or amputation, or uh, if you have bone specimen, it's very important for the specimen to undergo adequate decalcifying procedure. All these together provides us with an opportunity to uh, prepare a good slide, as you can see with this uh, type of equipment, and also to provide good cutting. This is an embedding machine, and uh, th these are staining machines, and uh, all these results in adequate histological slides, which, uh, which also further result in adequate di diagnosis, correct diagnosis, first and foremost. So, now, uh, also uh, responsive tumor to chemotherapy or chemoradiation therapy, that's very important. We use chemoradiation treatment effect assessment protocol. Mm, this is by uh, method of mapping. And also we use the COAS grading system in order to uh, determine the effect of treatment over the tumor. So what is the percentage of uh, of uh, vital tumor that is left behind. So we uh, have two or three perpendicular slices, which uh, gives us a chance to detect margins. Now here you can see macroscopic uh, cuts of a necrotic tumor after it uh, reacts to chemotherapy. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes, the uh, slides are not optimal. Now here you can see results of tissue mapping, and the asterisks show the ones which are not optimal for further procedures. But generally speaking, we need to we will have to put up with that, or we will need to do another cutting. The Hovo's grading system provides us with a very good chance to detect the percentage of tumor necrosis. Grade one, or the first degree, as we call it, it's approximately 50% of tumor necrosis or less. That actually means that there is little or almost no response to the preoperative chemotherapy. The degree two or grade two, this is more than 50% of tumor necrosis, but less than 90%. That means it's moderate, or it also can be classified as poor response. And grade three and grade, grade four of tumor necrosis from 90% to 99 and up to 100% of tumor necrosis, that means it's nearly complete good response or complete excellent response if it is great for. It's utterly important in our routine procedure, routine work, to have good coordination with the colleagues, both to surgeons, orthopedicians, and also radiologists and surgeons as well, and we actually keep touch on regular basis, and when I do the interpretation of biopsies, I always, at all times, I'm available on Zoom or telephone, and before the coronavirus, twice per week we come together and we have meetings with radiologists and we do the correlation between the radiological findings and the pathological findings. Uh, of late, we use digital pathology when all our slides automatically are scanned with, uh, by means of a computer, and actually uh, on one monitor, we can have different images, uh, radiological and histological findings in one, uh, just in one screen. Here in front of you, you can see the new bone formation. It's a specimen. So it's new bone formation, as I've already said, with an osteoblast and with a significant 
cellular infiltrates. What could that be? On the one hand, over here, at this X-ray image, even an inexperienced radiologist can judge that this is an osteosarcoma, but at the same time on the right, even an inexperienced radiologist will say that it's a fracture. This is a rough, but on the other hand, a bright example of the constant content, contact with the clinician will provide you with a good chance to interpret microscopical findings in a correct manner. Here in front of you, you can see a giant cell rich tumor. This is a tumor which is rich in multinuclear giant cells. What could that be? Without a radiological correlation, it's uh, utterly difficult to judge. On the one hand, this could be a giant cell bone tumor. As you can see here in this uh, X-ray image, on the other hand, it could be a giant cell rich osteosarcoma, as you can see here. The microscopical situation is similar and they can overlap, which will result in misinterpretation, incorrect interpretation of microscopical uh, findings. Location with radiological uh, correlation. So localization uh, gives us uh, with an utterly important data. That is why we do ask. We cannot actually require or just uh, um, demand from them, but we uh, do require correct, uh, correctly, do correctly fill in the referral documents uh, of uh, just biopsies. Because generally speaking, all these words, they provide us with huge uh, chances to interpret our findings and provide us with uh, huge data. Thus, we do depend on our colleagues. We depend on our uh, colleagues, and uh, this is a mutual process. We are interdependent. We are in good balance with each other, and we need to keep this balance. And all this provides us with ideal comfort for the patient, and also it provides us with an opportunity to uh, diagnose correctly and also to uh, provide the patient with an adequate, absolutely contemporary state-of-the-art treatment. We evolve. We evolve, we undergo the process of evolution, and we do change. At the moment, we have huge deal of different uh, inventions and uh, innovations which we uh, live in which we witness. Thus, there are new doors open up for us, open up for our tree, for our patients. And in the end of my presentation, I would like to show a photo of my daughter, who was taken after 20 minutes after she fell from a tree and actually uh, harmed her leg. But three. Uh, hours before, we went to the hospital and uh, she got an x-ray. This is a photo exactly in the period, it was made exactly in the period when uh, there was a fracture already is there, but she has not felt it yet. So this is a great example of a clinical and morphological correlation. Thank you very much.